You know what sounds even pro -er than Pro Max? Ultra. Ultra. Alrighty, first, story numero uno. Listen, if you want a Pro Max iPhone, this year might be your last year to do it because it looks like Apple is gearing up to replace the Pro Max in the iPhone 15 line with something rad, something sassy, something ultra. Yeah, not kidding, they're actually doing it. iPhone 15 Ultra. At least that's what Mark Gurman thinks. He thinks a lot of things these days, doesn't he? Uh, that is uh, that is foreshadowing for later. In the latest edition of his Power On newsletter, he gives his germy little opinion, which is usually just an actual leak disguised as an opinion in case he's wrong. And he says, based on Apple's current pattern, we can expect a revamped iPhone design next year, coinciding with a shift to USB-C and the potential of a new Ultra model replacing the Pro Max. This decision would track with Apple's latest naming schemes, obviously the new Apple Watch, Ultra just came out, and the currently most powerful Apple Silicon chip is, of course, M1 Ultra. So yeah, I'll buy it. Sounds about right. But is Apple just gonna cut the Pro Max name and just slap Ultra on there, like, with a sticky note or something? Or are we gonna actually get Ultra features? Well, glad you asked, myself, because according to rumors for next year, Yes, we are already talking about the iPhone 15. Uh, the larger, what would normally be the Pro Max model, will in fact be further differentiated from the regular Pro size. Apple actually used to do this a little bit, but in more recent years, uh, no. The Pro Max size is just it's just a Pro, but bigger. It's like, um, it's like the big Cheez-Its compared to regular Cheez-Its. Like, it's still Cheez-It, but big. But next year, we could be looking at a whole different beast. For starters, remember that periscope camera that we've been hearing is coming to iPhone? Yeah, well that's supposed to happen next year. What if that only happens in the Pro Max because of the larger size? I'm sorry, the Ultra. It's kind of way too early to speculate on final features like this, but I figured I'd just hit you with a little bit of next year's iPhone foreplay. Speaking of foreplay, you know what the best type of foreplay is? Eating. Food. I like food. This is a segue to the sponsor, if you couldn't tell. Uh, the, the sponsor is food. Listen, I'm a busy man, okay? And I don't even have a real job, but you probably do, which means you're most likely even busier than I am. That's why this episode is sponsored by Factor. Factor is the perfect mealtime solution for a busy lifestyle. Or a lazy lifestyle. Looking at you. Kevin. Their fresh, never frozen meals are dietitian approved and delivered ready to heat and eat in two minutes. So you can have way more time to do a lot of things or nothing. Even if you're on a protein plus, vegetarian or keto diet. No more prep time or kitchen messes. It's cheaper than takeout too. Seriously. And thanks to their commitment to ingredients with integrity, you can actually feel good about what you're eating every day. To get started, head to go.factor75.com slash frontpage130 and use the code frontpage130 to get $130 off across six boxes. The link is down in the description and of course a huge thanks to Factor for sponsoring this episode. Oh, hi, welcome back. Okay, so before we jump into this last story here, I do want to give you a bit of fapata news because we made a pretty significant change here behind the scenes. If you don't know this, 100% of every episode that you see is scripted. Every joke, every pause, everything. I do this to make sure there is a better, tighter end result, a better show for you. And up to this point, I have been writing every episode myself but not anymore. I have officially brought Brian Byrne back on full-time to the show. This time as the writer. He's been running FrontPageTech.com and he's typically been a part of this show in some capacity for the last 11 years. Other than me, he knows the show better than anyone, he knows me better than anyone, and I fully trust him to move forward writing the show. In fact, and yes, we did this on purpose, he has been writing for the last couple handfuls of episodes. And you could probably 
probably tell, I'm actually having a lot more fun recording. It feels fresher, and it takes a lot off my plate. It also allows me to make other videos that I want to make, like my not a review of the iPhone 14 video. Of course, I'll still be adjusting the scripts and writing the show myself when it comes to adding my own opinion, but setting my own ego aside, at the end of the day, I just want you to have a better show. And I think that right now, this is what's best for the show. It adds a whole new layer of creativity. Byrne is hilarious and he's a fantastic writer. The overarching goal of this move is to be able to make more episodes more consistently for you, which hopefully you probably noticed at this point. Uh, okay, listen, I know that was a lot of talking, but you are the ones that got us here. So I just wanted to be transparent with you. You're caught up. Uh, moving on. Story numero lasto. Oh, oh, wait. I just, I, I need a second. Uh, uh, please sit down on your nearest toilet and enjoy this hot, steamy cup of Depresso with me. If you watched yesterday's episode, you'll know that it was all about Apple's upcoming October event. And guess who decided to record and put out an episode in the same day that Mark Gurman decided to go back on a whole month of his own reporting and instead say, oh, actually, there's no Apple event. It's just gonna be a press release. Who hurt you, Mark? You know that the only itty bitty little reason we even thought there was gonna be an event in October was because you said there was gonna be an event in October. And you said that in August. So, yep, uh, that's it. Guess now we just have to sit around and wait for words to show up on Apple's website or newsroom or whatever. Uh, seriously, what, ha what happened? What changed? Of course, everything that we talked about in the last episode, all the products that we expect to see, we still expect to see just in, with words. It's still the 10th generation iPad with this new design, two new iPad Pros, two new MacBook Pros, and then of course the release of, finally, iPad OS 16 and Mac OS Ventura, yada yada, you know. If you want the specifics, the details of all that stuff, just go back and watch the last episode if you haven't already. So why now shift the narrative? Why does it have to be different now? I just, oh god, I am... Um... Jern is annoyed. I This is the face of an annoyed man. I don't know what to tell you. I like, I love Apple events. They're fun and I was looking forward to it. Good morning and all that stuff, you know, the usual Craig's hair, you know, the boys. The only thing that Mark's new take really tells us is that the rumors of a new Mac Pro or the insane idea of the appearance of Apple's mixed reality headset are kind of just baseless rumors because you know if they were planning those sorts of announcements you can bet your ass tim cook would be on stage yoked out of his mind p -p pumped after a three-hour lifting session to show every single announcement like there was a gun held to his dog's face god mark you are the worst why why are you the way that you are honestly every time i try to do something fun or exciting you make it not that way. I hate so much about the things you choose to be.